<laughs> no. Keep it simple and straightforward. <laughs> I've, I've heard a different S at the end of it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Okay. So, all right, shall we start? Uh, good morning. Oh, let's wait, wait for some uh, more participants. We can yeah. uh, just, just say hi, hello to everyone. And let's wait for some more participants, right? All right. Sure. Let's That's see a few good. names I know. Hey, Nero. Hey, Kristen. Hey guys, hello, hello, hello. Hi, Hi Jeff. Hi, everyone. How are you? Very well. How are you? Good, good. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Great. All right. How is your Saturday morning? Everyone has made a cup of tea or water. To be ready for our event, two hours. <laughs> Great, perfect. Matters what time you got up, might be your first coffee, might be your fourth. Yeah, that's the thing. You look like your fourth. <laughs> it's my wife just took two of the kids off to a track meet. I got the other one upstairs watching Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, <laughs> and then as soon as she gets back, I got to go coach uh, soccer out in CBS. So those yeah, were outside. My husband's taking my little girl to her first of three birthday parties today. I've got oh my second two later on today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a full-time job. Three birthday parties. Seriously. So is she gonna is she gonna be able to eat actual food or is it just gonna be pizza and cake all day long? <laughs> Are you gonna eat pizza and cake today? Cake. Hey, get it. Cake. <laughs> I think your mommy should make you sprint in between the parties to burn off all the sugar. <laughs> Last one's a pool party. That's going to be the best one, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. So okay. when's oh, the no. first party? Uh, oh, and mm -hmm. Sweet. I'm so excited. Tell me that. So, yeah. We got, more, we got more people showing up. Yeah. One more participant has joined. Welcome, Dwayne. Good morning, Dwayne. Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hi. So we can get acquainted with uh, each of our participants, <laughs> actually, mm -hmm. and make friends. Mm -hmm. So shall we wait uh, some uh, more minutes or can we start? What do you think? I think we can start um, slowly. Yeah, so let's get it started. Yeah, let's May have more join. So Ready, good then, morning. Go. One, two, three, go. Yeah, let's start it. <laughs> That's one more participant has just joined. <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, uh, project professionals, uh, PMI, current members and future members. Um, welcome to today's uh, event, Dynamics of Agile PMO at PMI Newfoundland and Labrador chapter. So we are pleased to be virtual guests um, uh, at your chapter and um, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador actually is uh, uh, famous for its colorful uh, homes on rocky shores, uh, a unique dialect of English uh, and friendly folk. And um, uh, the main industries uh, today are mining, manufacturing, uh, fishing, uh, pulp and paper, and hydroelectricity. So, and behind the scenes of all of this industry, of course, stands uh, proper and um, right project management. So I'm Nadine, uh, the event manager at PMO Global Institute, uh, and I will be your moderator for today. And, um, mm, uh, mm, 
PMI yeah, and Area Chapters team did a terrific pre-event job. So we are thankful to everyone for uh, coming uh, on this uh, Saturday's morning event. Um, uh, I promise it will be very valuable and joyful. Uh, so uh, at the end of the main session, we will uh, play a contest, um, uh, a Kahoot game. So and uh, five lucky winners will get uh, great prizes, uh, full year memberships. Uh, and um, for now, first of all, I'd like uh, to welcome uh, uh, the president of uh, PMI in Newfoundland and Labrador chapter, uh, Derek J. Follett. He was born uh, in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, now called the city home with his wife and three kids. Derek has started uh, his project management uh, career with uh, SNC um, Levelen, uh, executing capital infrastructure project. Upgrades at the North Atlantic Refinery uh, in Come by Chance. In 2012, uh, he moved to um, Technip FMC and inter sub -C, uh, construction projects, uh, holding uh, uh, senior and lead engineering. Uh, positions in Canada, Norway, and the Republic of Congo uh, before moving to his present role as offshore operations uh, um, superintendent at Atlantic uh, uh, Towing uh, Limited in uh, 2019. Uh, Derek is an active member uh, of PMI NL since uh, 2018 and has acquired his uh, master's uh, certificate in Project Management, MCPM, and uh, um, Certified Project Management Professional, PMP uh, designation. Derek uh, also brings his uh, existing uh, board experience to PMI NL chapter uh, as an elected member of the Board of Directors for Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Newfoundland and Labrador. So now I pass the floor to Derek uh, for welcome address. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Nadine. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So my name is uh, Derek Follett, as, uh, as Nadine stated. I uh, graduated from engineering in 2010. I've mainly spent my project management career starting off uh, more towards the engineering side. Not, not a lot of design, but then moving quickly into project management. Um, moving quickly into project management, not as a project manager starting off, but you doing segments of project management doing segments of project management. And then as I move further through my career, taking on more and more responsibility and then moving into a point where uh, now I've actually moved Nadine, it's not in that uh, update, sorry. I'm no longer the operations manager, now I'm the uh, capital project superintendent. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna share with everybody a presentation and I'm gonna talk about the challenges that I faced going through uh, PMO offices and working through PMO offices in Newfoundland and Labrador. And then the challenges that the industry is basically facing here in Newfoundland. Yeah, uh, just uh, before going to the challenges, uh, I would like uh, to start my presentation and roll through uh, the introduction of PMO Global Institute. All right. Great. Okay. So now I will share my screen. Um, okay. So can you see it? Yes, we can see. All right. Perfect. So today, uh, as I mentioned before, our topic is dynamics of agile PMO. And uh, um, you will uh, learn. Mm -hmm. OK, um, so you will learn. Uh, about PMO insights, uh, about types of PMO around the world. We learn tools and techniques to, to apply Agile PMO. We'll make use of the best practices in PMO and increase your success rate for your projects. And you will earn two PDUs, two contact hours. Uh, the benefits for our audience um, are like this. Uh, all participants uh, will get for free the CBPMO framework. Uh, they will um, get agile PMO tips, tools, and techniques. They will get access uh, to the largest PMO community. 
five lucky winners of our contest uh, will get uh, the full year PMO Global Institute memberships, uh, which actually cost $89, but they will get it for free and they will be able to download the PMO guidebook. Also, the, they will get 10% discount on PMO Global Institute certification program. Uh, so, um, yes, we will have the quiz. It will be a Kahoot game. First, we will have a warm up, and then uh, the second one, the real game, um, which will be awarded with prizes. Here you can see our PMO guidebook. So, who we are? PMO Global Institute is the global body for PMO certifications, representing global project management offices, including project, program, and portfolio managers involved in defining, establishing, and running high performing PMOs in and across industry sectors. So, our objective is simple to make PMO learning available to project professionals across the globe through certifications, events, networking, and hands-on knowledge sharing. We have members in 100 plus countries. And actually our target is to achieve 200 plus countries by the end of this year. We have uh, 70 plus partners in 60 countries. Um, PMO, 46% um, of PMO directors said that their organization wants to understand the value of project management. And 68% uh, of stakeholders perceive the PMO as bureaucratic. And uh, now it's time uh, to pass the floor back to Derek uh, to share uh, his uh, uh, practical uh, uh, insights and uh, uh, challenges uh, of PMO uh, in uh, small and uh, uh, middle enterprises. Please, Derek, the floor is yours. Welcome, Thank you very much, Nadine. Here, I'm going to bring this up now, and you let me know if you can see it. All right. Oh, sorry. All right, can people see that screen? Great. Oh, we're cooking with gas now. Thank you. All right. So this presentation is just going to state some of the challenges I've uh, faced to bring it a little bit more personal, uh, working through PMOs here in Newfoundland and Labrador and around the world, and then go into, as I said, what the industry is actually going through here now, which is a very large transition uh, as we move more towards technology. So what I'm going to talk about is my experience through project management. I'm going to talk about when you're working in an established PMO and basically what that means for you and what that means for your organization and your projects. Then uh, a personal struggle, which I'm dealing with right now, a uh, professional struggle, which is starting from scratch, a PMO in an organization that are, does operations, but does do projects, but never really had a formal PMO. And then, uh, as I stated, for the industry in general, uh, I'm calling it the big transition. And it's people, a lot of different uh, tech companies, specifically here in Newfoundland, that are bringing their project management offices online and their products online. But once again, there's, there's different types of project management. So... That, that learning curve, uh, bringing all of our project knowledge from one side, uh, waterfall over to an agile side is, is a very important step that we're, uh, that we're really having growing pains through right now. So for my experience in project management, just to let you know a little bit about Newfoundland, we have a big history of mega energy projects. So up until 1992, the major industry here, as Nadine said, was fishing. So we had fishing, we had hydroelectric, we had a couple of other um, industries built in, uh, built in around Newfoundland, but mainly it was fishing until we had the moratorium. Uh, after that, in 1997, we moved on to what I consider one of our, well, we, we had hydroelectric, but our first big one in the island of Newfoundland, which was the offshore platform Hibernia construction, which is the second largest structure ever moved by man. So what you end up with in the large PMOs uh, there's a huge amount of bureaucracy, as, as Nadine said, behind it. But what it does is it gives you your structure, your organization, your support. Uh, what I say about the, about the large construction projects is every player has a role and every task has a template. You know where to find things, you know who to go to, everything is laid out very cleanly. And in these large projects, you're usually just doing a small subset and you can get very well at it. Uh, so the big thing that I'd say about uh, being part of a larger PMO is if there's one part 
And everybody should be self-aware of what they do well and, and what they need to work on. If there's one part of the project which you find that you struggle with, say it's closeout or say it's planning, if you get into a larger PMO, you have the ability to really focus in on one area of, of, a, uh, of a project and a project phase, and you can dig right into that and you can, you can really fill the gaps in your knowledge. Now, from a smaller standpoint, smaller PMOs, uh, small construction companies around uh, small service providers doing inspection, repair, and maintenance on industrial equipment around. I've also been involved in that, working out around refineries in Newfoundland. And the big thing I found about that was we had a very similar situation. It was a typical uh, waterfall construction, uh, waterfall project management. And every form, every task had a template but you ended up taking on more of it yourself. So you had a much smaller team in these situations. You got a lot bigger view of the entire project. You were probably the, as on the project management team, you, you were doing the presentations, you were doing the minutes, you were doing the, uh, the uh, Gantt charts and you were doing the mitigations and controls. So if you want an overall big picture of, of everything, uh, getting into a small PMO is a good move. What I found is I started off in the small PMO and then went to a large one. And because I started off in the small PMO first and got a lot uh, more responsibility, I found that there are points that I really liked about being in a large PMO and being that structured, but I did lose that overall picture, which I didn't like. So I ended up going back to small and actually right back to, to starting PMOs, which is what I'm doing right now. So working in the established PMO, the big part of it is is everything is laid out for you. You have what you need and you have your people. So when you look at it, you can look usually look through a project uh, execution plan or process for your, for your company. And you can see where you can find every single step from charter all the way to lessons learned. Uh, that'll get you everything that you need throughout your project and tell you who you need to talk to, how you get the resources, how your functional managers and operational managers work. And yeah, it's all laid out, which is great. And the other side of it is, is you can get, they're used to doing projects usually, so you'll have a very good outline of resource management. This is one of the things that'll really struggle in smaller uh, PMOs, is they'll tell you exactly how to do it, but then everybody's fighting for the same people. So unless you have good buy-in and you have good communication and you can actually say, yeah, no, I need Tim to do this now. The problem is everybody needs Tim to do something right now, usually in, in the smaller PMOs. So the str big struggle is in the smaller PMOs is that you're going to have your uh, you're going to have your proper templates and processes, but you're going to find that you don't have the time and you, and you don't have the people. So you really got to plan in advance to make sure you get those, get those people lined up early. Now, why is all this important? Uh, I use this slide and I've been using it for years and it just states why is project management important. And uh, I'm just going to read through these quickly, just verbatim. And it says 9.9% .9 of every dollar uh, is wasted due to poor project performance. 32% of budgets are lost when the project fails to reach its goal. 39% of projects fail due to changes in the organization priorities throughout the life cycle of the project. 52% of completed projects experience high scope creep. So they're not tracking their, their scope properly and little things get added in and little things get changed and they don't, uh, they don't update the Oh, don't update their can charts and their and their costs and their scope properly. And then because of this, 68% of organizations outsource their project management to third party specialists. So the situation that I'm dealing with right now, and I'm going to go through my uh, personal struggle with uh, professional struggle with PMOs here in Newfoundland, and then go into the struggles, uh, the growing pains that we're having as we transform more to a technology driven society. So when I left the small construction PMOs and I went to the large offshore uh, construction PMOs, so I went from doing maintenance on industrial equipment to, uh, as Nadine said, going to the Congo and Norway and the US and everywhere where there's uh, oil fields and doing subsea inspection, maintenance and repair. Um, that, that I found, I, I, I missed the big picture of project management again. So I ended up going with an operator here in Newfoundland called Atlantic Towing. And what Atlantic Towing does is they have offshore, well, they have a fleet of vessels, offshore vessels, uh, tugs, but in Newfoundland specifically, we have offshore vessels that support uh, the offshore oil platforms. 
go back and forth. Uh, the one uh, project that we're working on right now that you can see the vessel in the middle of this is the Atlantic Condor. So this is gonna be leased out for the summer to Dalhousie University. And we're gonna be doing environmental uh, research off the coast of Nova Scotia. So the thing is, is that previously with these vessels, we were mainly just a charter. So other people would come in as a project management third party and they'd take us as one of the tools. So we'd be the vessel and we'd be put into their whole project uh, phase plan to, to operate the boat to, to execute a goal. One of the things that I've stated is that we are gonna be able to, where we have the asset, we can take a larger portion of this, of this control and start doing the projects ourselves. So instead of uh, pairing up with a third party, we've started executing projects on our own. Uh, we have one that's going offshore right now, which is a subsea uh, benthic survey. So you got to go out and you got to see the areas off the Grand Banks and take pictures of corals and see if there's any anomalies out around certain areas. So they're actually going out to do that now before they go down to Nova Scotia. Now, the, the thing is, is that the personal struggle which I had with starting a PMO is it's a smaller uh, operating office, as I stated. And when I went to say exactly what I needed to start a PMO, I said I needed six months. So they gave me a month and a half, uh, which is great. Uh, so what I did then, I, I was able to gather my templates quite quickly, but the part where I struggled was getting that delegation to the subject matter experts within the organization to find out how I could actually, because uh, you can't, no man's an island. I couldn't, you can't do it all. So I had to delegate stuff to HSE, how to track your, your uh, risks, how to control modifications to the vessel. Now we have it down for this first project, but it was a real baptism by fire. So, and the thing is then is that rolling those lessons back in, getting your checklists so you know that next time you got to do certain things earlier. Um, and that's, that's the big thing, rolling that into the project phase of the next one to make sure you actually learn from, from what you're doing. So yeah, it's still going to take six months. We got the first project done. It was a lot smaller. So it was, it was possible, but uh, there was a large learning curve. So there's lots of great assets out there. PMO Global has a lot of really good templates and whatnot. Uh, you can go back into the PMBOK, which at times can be like a glossary, and that can help you as well. Uh, but there's lots of great templates out there. The big thing is, is, is if you're starting one, is understanding your resource management. I think is where you're going to struggle because a lot of people are are going to be are going to be pulled in five different directions. So one of the other projects that we're doing, uh, I worked as I said, where I work for the vessels is we're trying to make everything more environmentally friendly. So this vessel here now, we're turning this into a battery hybrid. So it takes 16 tons of lithium ion batteries that we're going to put in this, and that's going to reduce the uh, diesel consumption per year by. 357,000 liters and reduce the CO2 emissions uh, by 654 uh, metric tons per year. So once again, uh, this one, we had a lot longer window and it came out from research uh, money that was uh, given up by the government during the pandemic. Uh, that's gonna be executed now next month. So we are juggling more of program doing multiple projects at a time. Um, this one, we, we uh, were able to implement a lot bigger structure around it. So it's, uh, it was a lot, uh, it, it's, it's going quite well. Yeah, both projects are, but this one is really following a more robust uh, PMO structure. So what I want to talk about now is the big transitions that are going on in Newfoundland Labrador and the challenges that are for PMOs. The two big things are new PMOs that are being set up and the transition to agile and the amount of resources that we have within our sector that aren't basically making that transition or not making it from that line from traditional waterfall and construction over into the tech sector. So, as I said, the two biggest things that you're gonna be looking at is, all right, well, I'm starting, a, I'm starting a company, I'm starting a PMO, I'm starting to execute, I'm starting to bid on projects. You need to make sure that you know what your deliverables are, your templates, and you need to make sure your people and your resources. So you may see people within your org charts, within your company that you say, yeah, this person can do this, this person can do that. But you need to make sure that you, your struggle is going to be, unless you're in a massive PMO, which means that you're starting your PMO as an actual project. And you got lots of money to do it and lots of time to do it and resources that you can haul in and, and third-party contractors. Usually what it is, is that you're developing it yourself. So you're gonna find it easier to get these uh, templates uh, which are important and put your structure together. 
but then start outlining your resource management to say you need this person this much, this person this much on these days and be as specific as you can. Because if you just say you need him 10 hours a week or her 10 hours a week, you're probably not going to get him. If you say you need him on Tuesday for eight hours and you, and you kind of, and you sh schedule blocks out, I find even scheduling blocks out when you need a break is a great big thing. So don't, don't be too scared to, uh, to schedule yourself in and make sure you get your resources. Uh, the other part is, is, as I said, the transition uh, when we're going from a mega project and small construction waterfall. We, we, we are very big project management province. There's a lot of projects that are going on all the time. But there's three types of project management, really. There's, there's predictive in your waterfall, which is you get through each one of your gates. As you feed in the next one, you do your planning, you do your execution, your mitigations and controls and your closeout, and you got to have everything in the buckets before you go along. Agile is what the tech sector is using. And we're having big growing pains right now, getting our project managers from one side over that bench to the other. Because what you're doing in the agile is you're actually just doing iterative controls for everybody as they know. So you're, you're, you're really saying, okay, this is what you want here. This is what I think it's going to look like. And then you make adaptations to that and you bring it back and you keep on bringing it back in small iterations until you get where you need to be. Uh, where I think uh, we're working towards more is we got a lot of people who have a lot of, uh, of waterfall experience, but they're going to be going to, to hybrid. So product management. So this is where we're seeing a lot of people making a successful transition in project management over to the uh, tech sector is coming in as product managers. So they are really still doing project management, but they're implementing uh, the hardware software integration. So as I said, typically we have our waterfall approach which is we're going through our getting all of our charter and everything down packed, our design, our planning, down to execution, down to actually uh, uh, seeing what we need to a final product and getting it out the door. Agile just takes that whole loop and basically runs it over and over again. And I'm going to show you a slide at the end of this and give you a real idea that we didn't really have a big, uh, robust tech sector uh, 20 years ago. And when you see the slide of all the techs, uh, tech companies that are coming up, it's quite astounding. Um, so one of the parts, as I said, was that we're, that we're having success in right now with PMOs in Newfoundland is the hybrid project management approach. And I'll just read this out quickly. Uh, in a hybrid, uh, hybrid project, the development phase takes on more of an agile approach with more information being delivered up front and less you need to wait for in the completion. So you're not waiting for a hard gate to get through to go to the next phase. Uh, there is still extensive planning, research and strategy behind your method, like in waterfall, but there is more flexibility to adopt changes like an agile. So one of the big things that we're doing as PMOs right here now in Newfoundland is we have a lot of emerging PMOs that are starting up. They are starting up a different type of project management and they're having growing pains. And to give you an idea where we've been talking about it within our local chapter and how we can provide training and how we can bring people in to provide training. And in, uh, specifically our, uh, our technology uh, director, uh, Dwayne has brought this up that this is a very important thing that we need to be getting over people over that line. So to give you an idea of all the tech companies that have started up in Newfoundland over the last, now some of these are older ones, but most of these are within the last uh, decade to two decades and a lot of the project management that's been knowledge and skills have been gained from all of our mega project work and our construction work are translating some of some of it's translating but not the level that needs to to make this uh support this industry as much as it does so as a as a province one of the biggest things that we need to do is we need to focus in on adapting our pmos to be more agile based. We have a lot of project management support that goes into the waterfall. We get, you can go out and you can hire a third party contractor to do your project management for your waterfall construction, but it's a lot harder getting a third party contractor to do your agile project management right now. So, yeah. And that's pretty much what, that's my whole presentation right now going from the mega projects all the way down to the tech sector and the, and the transitions that we're making. Great, Derek. I'd like to say uh, thanks to you for such a practical presentation um, and unvanished uh, um, information about pros and cons, problems, uh, obstacles that you meet. Um, I think all participants uh, gained a lot of knowledge uh, and uh, that is what we expected to hear from you, your personal experience and uh, uh, current situation. So thank you so much. 
Well, thank you very much, Nadine, for this opportunity to be able to speak to everyone. And I will key up the next presenter that we have for this event, which is the CMO, CEO of PMO Global, Abdullah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, after this, you know, uh, brilliant presentation by Derek, it's difficult to talk, right? So big, big kudos to Derek. That was a fantastic presentation. And you made my life easy. Because you talked about the different types of, you know, uh, the project management methods, the challenges, and I really got excited seeing all these mega projects you have been working. That, that's, that's really, you know, deserve a big round of applause that these are big things are happening. And, um, and it's, the more projects are coming, the more industry is flourishing, the more need for qualified project professionals uh, needs to be there. Not only project professionals, we need good PMOs to manage all, prof all project managers and the departments, right? So anyways, um, only I'm seeing very few faces. Um, you know, I have, I have these very old, you know, traditions, you know, I, I am a kind of project professional, so I always, always use this ring bell, ting ting, means we start our exercises, then when, when it's the ring bells again, we stop, and also during my session, you like it or not like it, Saturday morning, I know, but you have to be live on video right so let's get started everyone please come, come on, on people video. otherwise you want to your smiling faces <laughs> yes yes everyone of you have to come to you know let's, this live, let's... live video. video come on video please yes, nah. yes. See, gregor, gregor is not live again gregor is still sleeping <laughs> um, <Gregor. laughs> yeah, so who else we have um, we have jeff yes we see matt uh steven also there big couple of our friends also join brilliant thank you very much Dennis. and this is also an opportunity <laughs> for corinne to take a nice picture Laura. everybody say cheese <laughs> fantastic thank you guys thank you yeah yeah, thank you so much. So um, just to give a brief uh, you know, background about me, uh, my name is Abdullah. So you just call me simply Abdullah. So um, I have been a you know, agile practitioner almost the last 18 years, almost last 18 years. And I remember when we started working on agile, we started with this, you know, uh, banana scrum. I don't know if you can remember any one of you the system called Banana Scrum. That was the first thing we started probably 2003 and four. Um, so uh, then I got passionate about Agile and Agile is one of my favorite area actually, right? So uh, over the years, um, you know, it, that has been growing very, very fast. And even, you know, PMI has, um, uh, you know, made the whole PM book 50% Agile. You see, you know, in the, even in the sixth edition, uh, you know, the exam, you know, questions comes 50% from Agile. That means traditionally we used to think that, you know, you know, traditional way we can manage projects, but from fifth edition, now the sixth edition, you know, PMI is, you know, uh, realize uh, from the, you know, market practitioners that, you know, we really need Agile practices. And probably now we not only, you know, I'm not sure how many projects now running on waterfall, but it seems like most of the projects now actually hybrid. Knowingly, unknowingly, we are actually practicing hybrid. Hybrid means waterfall, traditional way of, you know, step-by-step -step process project management. And also we are adapting knowingly and unknowingly, we are adapting actually these uh, agile good practices, right? So most of the cases we are seeing. So um, I, you know, the uh, one of the one of the you know the core criteria for today's sessions is that this is the agile PMO we are talking about. So when it comes to agile PMO, uh, I assume that all of us has some kind of you know uh, good good knowledge about the different types of project management. Like you know, Derek has mentioned this. There is waterfall. There is you know you know incremental approach. There is you know uh, iterative approach. There is agile approach. There is hybrid approach. So I'm assuming. So all of us are on the same page 
from different types of project management methodologies because we are going to talk something a bit advanced today. All right, what is advanced? Because so far these different types of methods approach, I, I rather call it approach actually, not methods. So different types of methods, frameworks, uh, actually have been experimenting different phases. And uh, it is now quite established that, you know, we know that we can divide the whole industry into two phases. One is industrial project, another one is knowledge work project. I just wanted to give this, you know, background first, industrial projects and knowledge work projects. Okay. So in industrial projects, we know that, you know, if you are, if you are you know, working on a mega structure, it's probably a you know hundred storied building. You just can't go and you know experiment on a pillar, right? So because that needs to be plan driven. So in industrial projects, historically, which is a kind of repeated projects, historically, you know, you know, this waterfall or predictive type of project management approach actually is very popular. Till now, is very popular because. Uh, you, re you really have small, you know, scope of experiments between the, you know, the milestones. But on the other hand, when it comes to knowledge work projects, if you really apply, you know, waterfall kind of approach, most of the cases we have seen is not working. All right. So that's why, uh, you know, the concept of, you know, agile project management came up and now it becomes part of our daily project management life. Cycle. Let me share my screen. Just one second. Yeah. Can you see my screen, please? You can all see, right? Fantastic, fantastic. All right. Um, good, I'm now on the slide on uh, what is PMO. So you see, uh, this is always I ask during my presentation. So uh, any idea how many, how many, um, what is the number of PMP certified professionals we have around the world? Any idea? Except my friend Gregor and 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 few of my friends who knows the answer. I think it's about it's about seven hundred. What is it? Seventy thousand, eighty thousand, something like that, or seven hundred eighty eight hundred. I'm not sure. So uh, right. I could be yeah. I could be off by uh, by seven hundred thousand. So I'm not sure. Very good. What else, Laura? What do you think? How many PMP side professionals we have around the world? It's much more I than I would have thought. Yeah, I was thinking over half a million. Really? Come again, please. I, I got over gotta half a million. My, I got to look at my PMP number and just. Take that as, as a guess. <laughs> no, no, you cannot Google during this program. <laughs> yeah, so Jeff said half a million. Uh, How quickly can we research this? <laughs> what, did you, what was the number you said, Laura? I was thinking uh, more like tens of thousands. So I'm very surprised tens to hear these much bigger numbers. Thousands. We're All talking right, globally, so, right? So, I'm going to say so, a million. Millions, millions, yeah. So as far as I remember, the last number was 1.2 million. Very close, very close. Credit goes to Derek, very close. So 1.2 million PMP certified professionals around the world. So I assume that most of them actually are, uh, you know, project managers, majority of them, though it's not right. Majority of them are project managers, right? So, and to manage projects, we have this PMI framework. We have this 49 process, how to start a project, how to end projects. And during this process, we know that different types of project management methods, right? which actually Derek has mentioned, I have also mentioned. So um, now, what is PMO? I know all of you are aware about PMO, just to give a background and bring everyone on the same page. Why we need a PMO? Well, so the concept is very simple. When you have multiple projects, you need, to, you need to have, you know, central coordination of the projects. You need to have, you know, optimized resources. You need to establish some processes. There are many reasons why you need to have a project management office. Yeah, good. Now the question is how how PMO can be agile. All right, how a department can be agile. 
very interesting topic, right? So this is something very interesting that we are going to talk about today, right? And by the way, and before even we move to agile PMO, we need to first understand the framework of a PMO that the PMO Global Institute actually has, because we need to have this understanding first, then we'll move to different types of PMO, then we'll talk about the agile PMO philosophies and everything, right? So um, uh, just to add, just to say, you know, the, to more about it, just in, in, in Google, just go and you know, search by Abdullah PMP. I have a website, website is abdullahpmp.com. You can find me in LinkedIn and you can find me in my website as well, all right? So I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I, 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 I have been, you know, operating in, 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 into project management last almost uh, 18 years. So um, from PMO Global Institute, our vision actually, you know, help uh, PMOs around the world to establish a, uh, to bring everyone in a, in, 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 a, in a similar platform so that we, we can stop, you know, more, more failures into PMO space because, you know, probably 85% PMOs around the world is still struggling. The success rate of PMOs around the world is not easy. 85% PMOs around the world, uh, you know, still, you know, struggling because they don't have, uh, you know, a proper guideline. They don't have a, you know, structured step-by-step -step process. They don't have a PMO system. So PMO Global Institute is there to actually support you with a guidebook, with a framework, with, you know, uh, with, with, with uh, resources for the instructors. And we also have a PMO software so that actually you can manage entire PMO uh, through the resources that the PMO actually, PMO Global Institute has, right? So our mission in next three to five years to actually help millions of professionals to actually, you know, to be a better PMO professionals, upgrade themselves from a, you know, regular project manager to a, you know, professional uh, PMO and help those, you know, PMOs uh, do better, right? If you can even improve 5% of PMO's performance, 5% in the next three years, probably will be saving trillions of dollars, uh, you know, uh, in project management, trillions of dollars, just 5% in, uh, you know, three years. This is the initiative. That's why we are trying to actually share this knowledge through different platforms. And we are really great to be, you know, here today and really appreciate, uh, you know, Derek, you know, Laura and all the management of, you know, Newfoundland chapter uh, to organize this, particular event, right? I really like it. So let's get 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 uh, back to the topic again. So what is PMO? According to PMO Global Institute, a project management office is a group consisting of internal, external, you know, stakeholders, interest group, which defines, maintains, ensures standards for project management to deliver strategic initiatives. Uh, you know, uh, anyone who asked me, what is the objective of PMO? This is my definition from last 10 years. I always say PMO supposed to deliver strategic initiatives. Strategic initiatives, right? That covers a big area of uh, you know, what it should deliver, right? So, um, so now the question is PMO is there. Um, why do you think, why do you think globally, as I, I given you a number, 85% PMOs globally still fails, right? Why do you think every one of you needs to write at least three points in the chat box? Why do you think a big number of PMOs around the world struggling and failing? Why is that? Three points each of you. You have just you know uh, two minutes. Your time is just right now. Hit the chat box, please. Yes, I'm waiting. Will we type it in the chat or call it out? Type it in. Uh, yeah, just just chat, 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 you know, share in the in the chat box. Three points, each of you. Three points. Why do you think PMO fails? Nadine said strategic vision not aligned. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Matt said project management expertise is not there. Um, uh, Pilgrim said lack of support, probably you mentioned lack of support from the top management, right? Um, uh, Laura said control elsewhere at central location. I will ask, what do you mean by this, Laura? Um, Joe said, Katie, what is Katie, Joe? Katie. 
Um, then Eric said, lack of authority. Yeah, lack of authority. Um, Matt also said senior management sponsorship, very important. Um, Shahid Ali said, lack of management support. Christine said, lack of communication, we shall not share. Uh, Nadin said, poor lessons learned. Nadin, you're a champ. Um, Stephen said, poor communication, dynamic requirements said, lack of PMO budgets. Very important, he said, lack of PMO budget. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I like that. I like that, right? So coming back to Laura, what, what, what do you think, uh, you know, what, what did you mean by this, Laura? A lot of multinational companies we find have, um, may have headquarters in another location. Um, and I think it goes back to a lot of the same points that others have mentioned, but specifically when um, the PMO may be controlled from a head office in a different location, it can be very hard for people in the other locations to understand and buy in. Absolutely agree. What uh, Laura was trying to say that uh, we have seen this kind of PMO models in big multinationals, right? So let's say it's a bank, big banks, they have, you know, branches in 100 countries, and they also have uh, central PMO and also they have like regional PMOs. And sometimes we see that the regional PMOs or the central PMOs are controlling the local PMOs, then, then probably the alignment is not there, right? People are distracted, they have different, you know, reporting bosses, uh, kind of matrix type of organization. These are the challenges, right? Very true, very true. Many challenges, many challenges are there, right? So some, some of the, you know, reasons we have figured out uh, through this journey is that, um, you know, why PMO fails? You know, one of the reason is that all of you are absolutely right. All of you are absolutely right. So one of the reasons, you know, the value, value, the, the sponsors, the top management, do they really receive the values? within short period of time, right? This is one of the challenge, isn't it? Because most of the cases we see, and this is something also will be connected with our agile uh, philosophy of PMO, right? So many of the cases, it takes a longer period of time to realize the PMO's value, right? So that's why, you know, the top management, they, you know, they are not feel motivated in longer term to sponsor this PMO. Right, lack of senior sponsorship. One of you have already said this, lack of senior sponsorship, right? So um, inexperienced PMO, you have also said lack of expertise. Who said that? Lack of expertise? Yeah, so lack of expertise, you know, most of the cases it happens, probably he is a very good project manager. He's managing project fantastic. He's a champion. We're just making him head of PMO. He got just, just got promoted as a head of PMO. Now he has no, no idea how to set up a PMO and drive a PMO, right? One of the big challenge, one of the big challenge around the world. And probably I have seen many, many PMOs failing because of, you know, they are becoming accidental PMO. There was a topic, you know, almost 10 years back, we used to talk about is accidental PMO, right? Now we are talking about accidental, you know, accidental project managers. Now you're talking about accidental PMOs actually. Yeah, so it's happening. Um, then also these, you know, vision is not aligned. You know, you know, um, uh, priorities are not given to the PMOs. You know, uh, you know, sponsorship, sponsor not getting the value, value versus the benefit they're supposed to get. Many of the cases is very common. Organizations thinks, oh, there is a PMO. That means we'll be under surveillance all the time. You know, have you watched the movie called The Eagle Eye? It's a famous Hollywood movie, Eagle Eye, right? So the Eagle Eye actually is a, it's an AI big machine who, who actually monitors everyone in this universe, whatever you do. So that's why, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, uh, PMO, many of the, you know, the stakeholders things and the project managers things and the department things, oh, they are, we are under surveillance because there is a PMO. Right, so we, we they consider it as a police organization. Okay, um, then we have these uh, uh, low project success, uh, you know, because due to ill-fitting process and uh, and other stuff. So then we also have these um, top-down strategic alignment is not there, you know, consistency is not there, uh, strategic decision making is not there, poor project completions, and a lot of stuff. I'm not going to you know talk all of them. Right, many many uh, challenges are there. Okay, 
so um, one of the interesting one of the interesting buzzword is pmo the other way we have connected this with a concept called purpose measure and optimize purpose measure and optimize by the way do you know that um, you know we have a you know uh, games today at the end of the session and um, and um, you know uh, there will be five winners and the winner will get the pmo guidebook all right uh, and this pmo guidebook the digital version is available in our membership portal which is a paid version and five of you the top five scorer will get this membership free of cost right more objective is you are getting the framework uh, pmo framework and also you will be able to download this uh, you know the guidebook as well right so every buzzword pmo buzzword i'm talking about these sessions maybe you will be you know it would be wise to actually take notes and uh, so that you get ready for the for the games you are going to play right so this is a very interesting buzzword pmo stands for what purpose measure optimize purpose measure optimize the word optimize says a lot that means pmo is never settled right pmo is never settled that means even if you are into a maturity stage in terms of maturity like level 5 maturity you have the final stage we call it you know optimize stage okay just to give you an, you know i'm just sharing one uh, interesting you know the maturity life cycle of pmo in your chat box just one second um just take your chat box uh, i'm just i just share okay so this pmo actually has these five maturity models five maturity models okay so uh, number one is the infant stage infant infant stage number two actually you know um, we call it um, uh, defined stage then basically developing stage then basically it becomes a bigger a bigger bigger one we call it managed stage and finally we call it actually the optimized stage it's more like our life cycle isn't it more like our life cycle we start small as a kid then we move to childhood then we become matured as a pmo kind of managed not matured kind of managed then we become a you know regional leader then we become you know uh, probably a very respected leader very respected leader right these five layers these five layers of pmo now my question to you anyone has any idea around the world there are different statistics says pmos there are about all the you know the mid size and large type of organization it is found that they have some, some kind of project management office about 71% organizations that's a good number very encouraging isn't it 71% as per the survey says they have some kind of project management office they call it with different names right but kind of purpose is to manage multiple projects any idea what is the percentage of these pmos it still belongs to infant stage or maturity level number 1 any idea anyone what do you think which is the initial stage what is the percent a percentage what is the percentage of pmos around the world still belongs to initial stage 50 Matt said 60%. Matt said 60%. Um, Shahid Ali said uh, 50%. Joe said 35%. Very good. Stephen said 80. What else? Jeff said 50. I'm sorry. Jeff said 50. Good. Derek, what do you think? I just had what to run for about 60 seconds because one of my kids opened an exterior door to the house. I had to make sure they didn't take off. No, no. I'm repeating the question. The question is among these five maturity level, initial to optimized level, what is the percentage of PMOs still belongs to infant stage or initial stage? Any idea? I'm going to say a lot. 
I got a feeling there's a lot of people trying to start PMOs and there's not, not a lot that are actually like the amount of people trying to start PMOs versus the amount of them that I are out there. I already mentioned about 71% already has some kind of project management office. Hmm. Meet and large size organizations. So among those project management offices, how many, what is the percentage it still belongs to infant stage? I mean, just initial stage. What percent? Of, how much? What percent? I'd say, I, I'm going to say it's probably surprisingly large, over 50. Over 50. Yeah. The number is really shocking. It's 88%. Mm. Unbelievable, isn't it? There's a lot of people trying to do it. It doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, that means they're still operating in the initial stage. Now you think the scope of opportunity, this is, this is always I give this example, 1.2 million certified professionals, probably another 2 million project managers, but not certified, right? So, and also uh, according to PMI statistics by 2027, there will be another 27,000, 27 million new job will be created in project management. So all these project managers, they're moving towards, they're becoming senior managers. From senior managers, they're becoming the head of uh, project management office, right? Uh, or, or, you know, the PMO heads. So there is a lot of scope for all of us to add a lot of value and actually develop our career into PMO space, isn't it? This is something coming big time. Now we are getting a lot of requests around the world for, uh, for qualified PMOs. And we are seeing huge gap for uh, you know, professional PMOs around the world. So it's a big opportunity for all of us to actually think of you know, PMO as a career, as a next level from project manager. Anyways, let me go back to my uh, presentation segment. Okay, so um, uh, good. So now you see, um, we just learned about an interesting topic called PMO, Purpose, Measure, Optimize. Now you can connect, right? Optimize, that means level five even said optimize. That means you have to continue, go through this continuous improvement process, right? So here today, the winner will get this PMO guidebook where we'll have some good idea about agile project management and other different types of project management as well, right? And also, um, I'm just going to talk about a little bit before moving to Agile PMO, a little bit about a framework called PMO framework. The framework name is CBPMO framework, okay? So this is how it looks like. Yeah, so this is how it's looked like, okay? So it's very important to understand this framework first. Then we talked about the different types of PMO. That's why I said the Agile PMO, the concept itself is a bit advanced, okay? So I hope everybody is with us. So in this particular framework is copyrighted by uh, PMO Global Institute and uh, is being uh, now using by a lot of uh, PMOs. Uh, we are seeing good results as well. So now this particular framework actually divided into four layers, four layers. What are these four layers? Four layers are, it start with foundation layer. Then we have these executable layers. We have these supportive layers and we have this leadership base. Leadership and sponsorship. Leadership and sponsorship, right. Let me talk about this. The first sections, this first section starts with setting the business objectives. Okay, talking with the sponsors, Getting the getting the you know the feedback from them, their pain points. Spend a couple of days with your sponsors and stakeholders before even you actually start talking about you know PMO. Take them out, have lunch with them, learn and become their friends and learn their pains. What is the management pain in the organizations? Note it down. Note it down. Take notes. Spend a couple of days with them. Right. So and identify what challenges they are facing and actually the business objective, okay? Number two is that then you set up your PMO strategy and this PMO strategy actually covers a lot of stuff. For example, it covers the health checkup, health checkup of the, you know, the PMO. Um, health checkup is more like, you know, quickly test where your PMO stands and uh, quickly identify which are the areas you should focus. So PMO, uh, you know, guidebook, um, this uh, the PMO guidebook will give you a checklist, a quick checklist where you can actually quickly test your PMO and quickly come up with an idea where is the key pain point and the challenges of the PMO, all right? Then we have these, uh, you know, the maturity assessment uh, is a bit advanced, 
we have another sessions called you know how to measure and you know assess your maturity of the pmo is another very advanced level of uh, you know the pmo workshop uh, for experienced pmos then you need to analyze the different functions then you set up the pmo roadmap then finally you go and set up the pmo chart many of us are here actually you know uh, uh, project managers and most of the things in project management life cycle we do to start our project with project charter isn't it yeah how many of you start your projects with a project charter i mean considering all the other stuff is the done right even in the you know in the in the pmi framework the first thing in the initial stage the process is project charter isn't it project charter that means you start the project with the project charter but here in pmo we are doing when we are doing the project charter we are doing the project charter after doing all these activities first we are doing assess, assessing the you know the objective then the health checkup maturity assessment analyze and define the scope of uh, you know the uh, the you know um, uh, the the scope of and functions of the pmo can offer then you have the pmo roadmap pmo roadmap itself is a probably you know uh six months to you know 10 years roadmap could be there you see again i'm telling you this particular roadmap could be three months to six months to 10 years right goes phase by phase phase by phase right then you show the you know that's why i will come to this how you can really make your pmo successful especially in mid-size organization small size pmos I will I will come to this point uh, very quick. Uh, some suggestions align with agile, uh, you know, PMO philosophy. All right. So uh, then you go and sign the charter with your management. That means before even you sign your PMO charter, you have lot of background activities and everything. Lot of background activities. Set up the roadmap, step by step roadmaps and everything. Right. This is what we call. What do you call this section? Foundation layer in the PMO. Everybody is on the same page, right? Foundation layer of the PMO. All right. Now the next part, you set up your PMO. You know, um, uh, you decided that uh, even if you consider one of the KPI of the PMO is establish your processes, develop and practice, and develop and you know, uh, you know, uh, establish your processes within the PMO, right? That means setting up your, you know, project management uh, policy, governance, uh, then basically the different types of SOPs, the policies. Do you think you can actually do it within the three months or six months? Right? Again, you have to decide. Again, you have to decide. In phase one of the roadmap, how much documentation and the policy I will develop. In phase two of the roadmap, which are the new SOPs will be coming up in, in, into the mind, you know, the basket, right? It is also very important. This particular term is called 2PG. It's again a copyrighted uh, trademark of uh, PMO Global Institute. Policy, procedures, and governance. Can I ask you something? What are the typical SOPs you need to develop for your PMO? Anyone? Anyone? Project SOPs. In your project management office, what are the what are the you know the minimum SOPs you need to establish your PMO? Could be by phase, like startup versus conduct versus closeout, high levels. True, true, true. So basically, again, as I said, it could be developed phase by phase, right? But again, if if you ask me on the fly, I would say. We, you need a you know uh, risk management uh, SOP. You need a you know uh, issue management SOP. You need probably change management SOP. You need conflict management SOP and so forth. Right. So a couple of quick SOP you really need to you know start uh, with your PMO in phase one. All right. That could be like you know fifty plus uh, policies as well. Okay. So now you see these this this is what we call these this particular area. This particular area, we actually call it executable layer. This particular area, okay? Executable area. Here you decide what are the policies, you know, the procedures and the governance you're going to set up based on your, you know, the roadmap. Next, develop POC, proof of concept. Let's say, you know, 
um, let's say, you know, uh, Corinne has came, uh, actually came from a big MNC, joined a mid-sized organization, right? Now Corinne said, oh, I work in big PMO. I have done X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and this big list of activities. Now I'm going to apply this to my new organizations, which is a mid-sized organizations, new PMO. What will happen? I can guarantee that if you want to bring and copy paste the other layers, other big, big organizations, you know, framework into your organization, the new organization is going to fail. It's not going to work, right? First thing she needs to do, go through the management, have sitting with the top management, go through, uh, have a lot of brainstorming, find out the key points, then design your roadmap, then design your policy and procedures, all depend on the objectives actually connected with the objectives, okay? Then you define your SOPs. Now, whether your framework and the SOPs and the, and the, and the 2PG you have developed, is that correct or not? Don't you think you need to test it in a small scale, right? So now what do you do? Try it out, develop proof of concept, the frameworks that you have developed, customized framework, try it out three months or probably six months, try it out in small project in small scale uh, PMO, check it out and see the results. If it's working well, fantastic, fantastic. Parallelly, you also have to actually define your KPIs, define your KPIs, right? So it's also important, I think if you go through the PMO guidebook, you can literally see how to develop KPIs for your PMOs, smart KPIs by the way, measurable KPIs, right? How many of you, uh, how many, you know, your sponsors things a PMO is a cost center. Raise your hand. How many, how many your sponsor or management things? PMO is a cost center. That means through PMO, you're spending money. Fantastic, Stephen. Fantastic, right? Actually, here what we say, there's another, you know, uh, you know uh, area. We call it evaluate the PMO's ROI, return on investment. Right, we came up with the concept called PMO could be a profit center. You're talking about very interesting stuff, right? PMO no longer actually is a cost center. PMO actually is a profit center. A little bit later, we'll go and talk about PMO could be value-driven entity, right? So actually you can literally show measurable and visible and invisible value, which can be converted into you know, uh, a profit center. I can literally go and show your top management. See, this year, my PMO has generated this amount of revenue. Kind of believe it. Think of the mindset of the top management will change. What? Oh, PMO huh? is bringing revenue? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So that means in the PMO guidebook also you will see you know how to actually you know um, you know uh, find the ROIs, how you can measure the profitability of your PMOs and all this stuff, right? And track your PMO performance. There are certain tools also given. Track your PMO performance and continuous improvement is also there. In 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 going through this journey, you always need to have these support layers. So this middle part, what do we call it? Everyone, what do you call it? This middle part, executable layer, executable layer, right? And this, this left side and this right side, this portion, for example, you need a PMO software, okay? You need actually stakeholder management. You need actually, you know, different, how, in different types of environments, how PMO operates, right? You, need, you, know, you know, we need to have a, you know, uh, succession planning. I have seen many PMOs in large organizations where large organizations, they started their PMO and literally once the head of PMO left, their PMO got shut down. How many of you have seen this? I have seen many. Large organization, right? PMO started new, the head of the PMO left, switched job and PMO got shut down. Why is that? Because they don't have the succession planning within the PMO, right? 
So then you see there is a special piece called agile PMO in the in the framework as well. Look at this agile PMO. We are going to talk a little bit about this. And and the and the lower part and the lower section which goes from the beginning to end of the life cycle of the PMO, we call it PMO leadership. In PMO leadership, there is executive sponsorship and there is emotional intelligence. We have been talking about a lot of about project manager emotional intelligence, right? So actually the top management of the PMOs need a lot of, lot of, lot of emotional intelligence. They need to understand how really PMO operates, how the psychology of the PMOs operates, how the stakeholders of the PMO operates, very, very important. So I think all these details and everything you will get in details with examples in the PMO guidebook uh, if, you, if you actually win today, right? So you got to win today. You got to win to the top five winner will get the PMO guidebook. Now we have an idea. We have an idea, uh, right? That, you know, the different, you know, the, how this whole PMO life cycle operates, all right? Okay, now, uh, this is the questions again, again to uh, back to you. Write down at least three PMO, types of PMO, so far you are aware about, or you have seen this type of different PMOs, right? You've got two minutes, you've got to hit your inbox. Everyone has to say at least three types of PMO. Three types. What? Three types of PMO that you came across so far. Supportive, supporting PMO, uh, controlling, Matt said consulting, directive standard, Jeff said enterprise, then standard, what else? What else? Gregor said functional, projectized, hybrid, quality focus. Yes, could be. Laura said quality focus. We normally call it actually compliance PM. Laura, we call the exact name is compliance PM actually, right? Uh, let's say, you know, compliance PMO is like, you know, your company wants to actually uh, go for some kind of certification, like, you know, C CMMI or, you know, probably lead certification or some kind of, you know, heavy ISO certification, but then you can have a, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, project management office who will ensure throughout the organization, this certification standard is implemented, right? Good. Then um, Chris, Christian said, enabling true uh, governmental, Laura, Laura said government. What did you mean by government, government by this? A very citizen driven, um, democracy focused. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. A lot of good ideas actually has come up. Um, Shaidali, where are you, Shaidali? You have been answering very well. Shaidali, I'm not seeing you. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can come on video, that would be great. You are answering all of my questions. Thank you very much for your participation, actually. Right. Okay, so uh, let's get back. Let's get back to my original question. So, you see, as per statistics, as per one of the survey, they came up with probably 120 plus titles of project management office. 120 plus types. Some, some of you call it project management office. Some of you call it project office. Some of you call it portfolio program, blah, 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 a lot of stuff. 120 plus. I think the best approach is based on you define or call, it doesn't matter what you call it, what, what, how do you call your uh, PMOs? The best advice I can give, define your framework first, define the functions that your PMO will perform. The functions your PMO will perform. Then you define, you know, you, know, you put the, your department title according, it's up to you. Your title doesn't mean you actually have a portfolio, you know, a portfolio management office or program management office. Depends the, the functions that you're going to offer through your PMO and phase by phase, right? Okay, good. So look at this. This is, you'll find in uh, actually uh, in, um, in PMO guidebook that we have. So basically it has a couple of layers. 
couple of layers. Uh, one of the layer is actually, um, you know, we call it portfolio management, all right? Then we have program management. Uh, we have project management, portfolio, program management, then project, you know, project management. Many of the cases actually, many of the cases will be surprised to know, portfolio management office, we call it enterprise PM. Many of the cases. Many of the cases, program management office is called center of excellence. All right. And, and, and regular project management office could be like, you know, I know uh, under, you know, business unit or organizational unit, which we can call it actually functional unit. There could be special purpose PMO, right? Let's say your company has set up that, you know, next three years, my, uh, you know, capacity of the production, we want to go 10 times more than this, this year. So you, are, you have a special uh, projects and you have set up a special purpose PMO to serve this particular uh, project objective, right? And under this, you, it could be, it could be a, you know, a supportive PMO, controlling PMO and directive PMO, as well as a hybrid PMO could be there. Within the organization, you can have multiple types of PMO, right? Probably you can have an enterprise PMO or probably you can also have a, you know, functional PMO. I'm sure many of you have actually have seen probably what, you know, your engineering, uh, you know, your engineering uh, functional, functional uh, department, you have probably the engineering uh, department, right? They have probably a, you know, uh, a project management office under their department. Probably have seen you have a, uh, you know, PMO under IT department, right? There are many cases. We call it actually functional PMO, functional PMO. And even we have seen that there is a functional PMO within the departments. And also there is a supportive PMO in the enterprise level. So multiple combination could be there. It's not necessary that you need to have an enterprise PMO entire organization, not necessary. It doesn't work all the time, right? Depending on the need of the organization actually. Okay, right. And also, uh, also, we have seen there are PMOs, we call it compliance PMO. This Laura just said, focused on quality improvements, right? Quality compliance PMO. We have this digital PMO. It's a, 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 a digital PMO also is a philosophical uh, kind of PMO. And we also have a agile PMO. Agile PMO, right? So, so all together is kind of you know, the different types of PMO we can see in this particular one particular page, how different right how different could be the different types of pm now as i mentioned you know we are going to talk about only agile pmo today but actually you know i really need to give this background first how this pmo the different types of pmo operates why the framework is important before we even move to you know agile pmo or different types of pmo there you know how these different pmos operates and all these things right so now we are going to talk about a, a, a brief about the agile pmo um, so basically Agile PMO is, is very interesting concept. We know about Agile project management, right? But when it comes to the Agile, the word itself Agile, what is the first thing comes to your mind? What do you think? Tell me quickly. Everyone, Jeff, what do you think? What do you think? When you think of Agile, what the things comes to your mind? Flexibility. Flexibility, fantastic. Fantastic, <laughs> what else? Tell me, Laura, what comes to your mind when you think of Agile? I said adaptive. Come again? Adaptive. Adaptive. Fantastic. Fantastic. Transparency. Transparency. Brilliant. I'm sure you're taking these notes. Three points already came up, right? Flexibility, adaptability. Christine said, uh, you know, transparency or visibility, isn't it? Visibility, right? What else? Stephen, what do you think? Derek, what do you think? When it comes to Agile, what comes to your mind? Gregor, tell me, what comes to your Basically mind? Basically thinking for adjectives for, for adaptive, like fluid. Adaptive, adaptive right. Gregor, tell me one, one particular uh, you know, word that comes to your mind. I write down that it is iter iterative and iterative. of course flexible. Flexible, brilliant, brilliant. 
Um, who else on? Shahid Ali, you want to share something? What comes to your mind? Uh, it is uh, flexible, uh, adaptive, yeah, co collaborative as well as uh, collaborative. Being fast. Collaborative. Brilliant. Fantastic. Collaborative. I take this one. Collaborative. Stephen, you want to add something? I just said dynamic. Dynamic. I like that. This is the title of our today's session, right? The dynamics of agile PMO. Brilliant title, right? Very good. So, uh, so uh, now actually, you know, you all know the story of agile, right? In two thousand one, you know, around it came actually from I would not say it's from just from software industry. Actually, I consider it came from knowledge based industry. Because in knowledge based industry, you have a lot of unknowns when you work on a new project, new knowledge based project. There are a lot of unknowns. When there is a lot of unknowns, you can literally predict what you have to do tomorrow or next month or next year. Difficult. In most of the cases, we fail. That's why the concept came agile, step by step, incremental, adaptive, you know, iterative, all these philosophies, right? So, about 17, you know, um, uh, you know uh, uh, software practitioners. They joined in a you know, dinner one day and they were frustrated and they said, oh, come on, let's you know, set, set something, set some principles that we can follow together. And they started these, you know, these, uh, you know, agile principles and manifesto, 2001. Then it started to become a big bang and everyone actually, you know, realized the benefit of agile and it's adapting. Once upon a time, even I have faced this question many times, oh, agile, that means probably you um, work in a software company, right? Mostly it was kind of IT and software till 2010. Now in last, you know, five to seven years that becomes everyone's uh, philosophy actually. It's no longer just IT, software or knowledge base. It becomes everyone's philosophy, right? So uh, now we are going to talk about a little bit about agile and how it is, how you can connect it with your Agile PMO philosophy, okay? All right, we all know these four manifesto, right? Four manifesto, you know, if you just go and search Agile manifesto, this is the foundation, foundation values if you want to operate in Agile environment. So you need two things. One is these four manifesto. If you want to be an Agile PMO, you first of all need to know ins and out of the values and the philosophies and the love and the passion of these four manifesto. Number one, manifesto, agile manifesto. Number two, you need to adapt, understand, believe the principles of agile. There are 12 principles in agile. So four manifesto and 12 principles. This is all we know, these four manifesto and principles we need to add up for when, if you want to move to agile project management. But when it comes to agile PMO, how that can be adapted, this is what we're going to learn today, right? Now then, how much time we have? I have actually. Um, around seven minutes. Are you sure? I'm, I'm the keynote speaker today. You have to give me some extra time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just started talking actually about agile, right? So give me 15 minutes. 15 right. minutes, and just later on. Okay, right. Okay, so, so first of all, we need to understand this particular four manifest first. Then we'll talk and understand the 12 principles of agile PMO. So number one, individual interaction over processes and tools. What does it mean? Many of the PMOs I have seen, they come with a big mission that, you know, we are going to, you know, they spend a significant amount of time developing processes, processes and, and, and templates, forms, policies, governance. Six months, one year time, they already spent the time they go and start applying it. They see it becomes very heavy for the, uh, the project team. I'm trying to connect the philosophies, right? So what does it mean? Individual interaction over processes and tools in Agile PMO means, you know, go for MVP. Now, what is MVP? 
minimum viable product, right? Apply this concept here. Okay, minimum viable product means think to operate in small scale in a PMO, new PMO, what are the minimum processes and the templates and the policy you need? List it down. Minimum processes, right? If you follow minimum processes and minimum required tools, let's say you just need one tool. For example, the, the kind of PMO software that we have, this particular PMO software actually covers your document management, risk management, issue management, uh, probably, you know, uh, you know, agile project management, the waterfall project management, use a simple tool that supports your uh, PMOs, right? And minimum viable processes. So we just have renamed and created a new name for our PMO. What is, what do you call it? MVP means not minimum viable product, minimum viable processes. Warren, please register this, this one. <laughs> minimum viable processes for your PMO, all right? Okay, so next one is working deliverables over comprehensive documentation. Again, same thing, don't spend too much time, spend one year time developing all the documents for your PMO. Rather start small, divide your documentation into three to four phases. Come up with something, small increment every three months. A small increment every three months. I will give you, I will share one example and one small trick, how you can make your sponsor happy within three months today. Wait for a few minutes, I will share you this tip. How you can make your sponsor excited. Your sponsor will be dancing just after three months. Wait for the tips, all right? So working deliverables over comprehensive documentation. Next is customer collaboration over contract negotiation means it's applicable for both of your sponsors, stakeholders and internal teams. I'm telling you a bit advanced topic, which means, that means most of the cases we have seen we PMOs are very rigid, want to, want to defend ourselves, very defensive approach we apply, right? Uh, with the management, we say we need these resources, this time, blah, 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 blah. And we become very rigid from a PMO's point of view. Sponsor also become very rigid. And also we try to push the stick to our project management team as well and the stakeholders. We say, you have to give me this. You have to follow these templates. You have to you know, submit these reports by so-and-so for that. Good, but instead of too much rigid, why not you be collaborative and see, and really see what is the minimum you know, uh, uh, effective reports, compliance report you need. So you need to have a kind of collaborative approach and engage your stakeholders time to time. Go for lessons learned every one month with your stakeholders. Get their feedback, right? And be adaptive, be adaptive. Number four, responding to change over a following a plan, right? Right now we are working on something good. Some new change request has come up within the team some new requested has come up, some new process recommendation has come up. Let us be flexible. Let us be flexible. Let us have frequent reviews so that we can add up new changes. Frequent reviews, by the way. That means like project management, we know we need to have reviews every you know, lessons learned or retrospective. In PMO, I normally recommend you should have a PMO lessons learned with the stakeholders every month actually not every quarter in the initial stage, unless your PMO becomes in managed stage, level three maturity level. Unless you become mature till level three, have frequent you know, lessons learn session with your stakeholders so that you can learn and adapt, learn and adapt to respond to changes. Clear about it, everyone? We are on the same page, right? Fantastic, I'm not seeing lot of faces. Pilgrim, where are you? I'm not seeing you. Ernest, I'm not seeing you. Richard, where, where are you, my friend? Richard, 
Christine, I haven't seen you since morning. I have already taken, you know, three cups of coffee. Right? Finally, Christine, welcome. Big claps. Hi. <laughs> welcome, Christine. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric, my friend, after a long time. How are you doing, Eric? Thank you. Right. So just an idea how this manifest can operate in agile environment. Now let's move to the next level. All right, the next level is now we're going to, going to talk about some of the implementations of Agile PM. You can take these notes. Adapting Agile manifesto while designing the PMO framework. The frameworks that we have is not necessary, will be applicable for your organization, by the way. It's a framework means it's flexible, by the way, isn't it? When you say methodology, probably methodology is very rigid. You need to follow X step-by-step -step process. But when we say framework, actually it means itself is flexible. That means you can take the components that you that is good for your organization. You can remove the components that is not required for your organization, or PM. Right. So first of all, you know, make it flexible. Customize the framework according to your organization need. Number two, right? Develop flexible process and procedure, not rigid that we have already talked about. Number three, delivering values. Delivering values, right? So uh, this is very important. From now on, we'll call we'll call our PMO as Profit center, not, not actually cost center, right? How we can make it profit center because it is value driven. It's value driven. That's why we can convert the value into profit, into, into numeric value, right? So there is a method we'll talk about in a different, different, different day. Uh, use of agile tools over traditional methods. You actually need a tool not Excel, by the way, you actually need a tool, not a task management tool. Probably 95% agile tool we have in the market is very fancy task management. They have, they have given you good Kanban board, drag and drop, task update and all this stuff. But with this fancy task management tool, you cannot manage PMO, by the way. It's good for project, small project management. But when it comes to you know, PMO, that means you need to manage projects, programs, management reporting, and all this stuff, you actually need a tool which actually covers both agile project management, traditional project management. It has this project forecasting, earned value management, you know, velocity, and, and you know, probably you know, the, 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 the hit list, um, all the PMO reporting it delivers from the system, right? So maybe Corinne, you can share the, the, the trial version of the PMO software that the PMO Global Institute has. Check it out. Again, I would like to put that don't just go and try this out because that will require at least a half day training to learn how to configure and set up this particular product step-by-step -step process, right? So because it's an enterprise application. All right, so these are the couple of, uh, you know, the agile uh, implementation example I'm just going to give you. I will give more example very shortly, right? Uh, now it's very important. I'm going to talk about principles. How many principles, agile principles for PMO? 12 agile principles I'm going to talk about. How many? 12. And you have to understand it by heart. This is the number one condition to actually adapt agile, you have to adapt the agile mindset. That's why we always say it, right? What is agile? Agile is a mindset. And this mindset belongs to these 12 principles. Okay, so let's start with number one principle. Okay, that we should use in when we are designing your agile PMO. Number one, satisfying PMO sponsor and top management through early to early quick win and continuous delivery of valuable work. Nobody talks about sponsor happiness. Come on, sponsors giving you money, resources, isn't it? You have to make them happy, right? And if you want to make them happy, you came up with a great idea like next, 
uh, you know, you will give them the value after three years, they will lose motivation, isn't it? Your sponsor will lose motivation. How long is going to wait? Three years, one year? Here is the tips. As I told you, committed, I will give you a tip. How you can bring quick wins within your PMO. Let me share my notepad with you. So can you see my notepad? We can, yep. Perfect, perfect. This is my simple recommendation to set up and bring some quick win within your PM. Number one, right? First of all, we always say um, uh, PMO setup, right? So initial things, what you need to do, basically, you know, after understanding business objectives and all this stuff, develop your two PG. What is two PG? Policy, procedures, governance. All right, policy, procedure, governance. How we can do it very quickly? Okay, just let me give you some tips. First of all, you have you need a project management policy. You need SOPs, couple of SOPs. You can have project management policies, plans, all the plans. You know your recovery management plan, your development plan, your methodologies plan your data management plan, your you know, procurement management and all the 10 knowledge areas that you have is the minimum, you know, the plans you need to develop for your PMO, okay, right? Number two, set up the, you know, the SOPs. This is what we call phase one. Phase one is that understand requirement plus develop to PG. Phase one I'm talking about in your PMO. Okay, SOP, what are the SOPs you can set, set up? As I mentioned, who can help me? I have already mentioned today, what are the different SOPs, uh, minimum you need to set up your PMO? Who can volunteer? Anyone? Christine? Risk issue. What else? Management. Yeah. You need risk management SOP and escalation process. You need issue management SOP and escalation process. You need like uh, you know, conflict management, right? Very important. Conflict. You need um, um, uh, the conflict. Change. What else? Change management and many more. I can list at least ten. But these are a couple of minimum SOPs you need, right? How long it should take in phase one? I'm coming to this later on. So phase one is, you know, developing the, uh, you know, the two PG for it. Then phase two, phase two, right? Phase two, and here also the final output from this phase one is governance, PMO governance. PMO go governance actually is a document, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, tip of the iceberg, right? So governance, basically, if you, you know, take a governance, it will give you the whole idea how this whole PMO will operate, right? Anyways, normally we develop the governance at the last document uh, when we actually, you know, uh, develop the 2PG. Okay, phase two. Phase two, what we say? Piloting, right? Take one or two projects and apply your framework. All right, apply your framework. Okay, so could be this, this phase could be like three to six months. And again, I'm telling you, take small projects. Again, I'm not talking from a you know, big matured PMOs. We're talking about a new PMO, new PMO, right? So um, basically three to six months and see whether the policy and the framework and it's really working or not, right? Till that time, you can be a supportive PM, not a problem, right? Then phase three, phase three, basically, you know, and also at the same time, you actually need a PMO software. PMO software, okay? So uh, now there is phase three, phase four. I'm not going to talk about phase three and phase four at this moment. It will take some time. So phase one, 
what do you think how much time you will need to come up with you know the initial set of 2pg how many months do you need for phase 1 what do you think perfect perfect actually maximum 3 months uh two resources experience definitely experience resources right so i'm just giving you a quick win kind of situation quick win kind of situation two resources then basically you know three months you develop a 2pg and what do you do after three months you compile you compile all of your policy procedures into one document print it out then current can you show the guidebook yeah print it out like this even if it's a 200 page or 300 page doesn't matter print it out then take this as a gift to your sponsor and give it as a gift christmas gift or a birthday gift or a monthly gift doesn't matter i can guarantee you that when they see something visible out of pmo at least you have set up all the you know sop is how this pmo operates policy person everything don't you think they will be so excited and happy and they will realize oh i got something because all the all the sponsors they want organization to be sustainable and all now the way to make it sustainable is to you know document your processes policies and everything right this is now quick quick win tips one number two phase two piloting now thing you have like 30 projects going on and out of this 30 projects out of this 30 projects you just you just take in one or two projects isn't it as a piloting after first month second month what you should do take out the monthly project status report from your project management office software take this report to your sponsor and show boss see 30 projects the report is not yet ready and look at my report it is a system generated report not a single manual touch not a single manual touch we just go select the date generate the report and the report is coming as visible very much visible and transparent what is your plan versus actual how much you have spent and everything without any manual without any manual efforts like you know you develop your ppt is you spent one week time by the time you develop your you know uh, you know monthly project status report in ppt already you are lack of one week uh, data right second win quick win i guarantee you that your pmo sponsors will be so excited seeing this report which is visible real time report from the system make sense make sense right probably when you go through the cbpmo certification and all you will go through this all this level 3 uh, phase 3 4 5 and all other stuff right does it make sense steven yeah jeff what do you think exciting right i just explain actually i should you know i should take a one day session for agile pm it's not a you know one hour session because each topic is very important and linked you need to give examples how practically it actually operates right so um so this is number one principle is clear to everyone right early quick win how to get early quick win in agile pm right number two pmo road map pmo road map when it comes to road map what comes to your mind phase by phase development isn't it incremental development isn't it right incremental development phase by phase development again does isn't this particular concept connected with agile because agile talks about incremental development iteration learn from your mistake then do better in next sprint right so in agile in pmo the framework that we have actually clearly mention you need to have a agile you know a pmo road map you need to have a pmo road map right so in pmo road map you set up so now jeff what do you think in your pmo road map in phase 1 of the road map what should be your uh, deliverables 
Jeff? You mentioned the um, showing the value, right? So doing the report comparison of original um, software versus the new PMO yeah, software, probably right? Second phase. Probably it's, it's, it's phase two. Roadmap one could be three months. Only deliver two PG. You, because even you, you know, start a new uh, you know, a department, you need the policies, right? You know the procedure before, before even you start. So in your PMO roadmap, I'm just giving you some real example. Put 2PG as your you know, phase one uh, you know, roadmap delivery. Then phase two, three to six months, put system generated report of PMO. Then you set up phase three, phase four, phase five, right? Again, we can connect the PMO roadmap incremental, how it is connected with the agile philosophy. Number three, recognizing the best work and organize self-organizing team. Self-organizing team. Thank you, Nadine. Thanks for the reminder. I'm just doing a few more minutes. Self-organizing team. Self-organizing teams means motivated individuals. I think today, everyone who have actually joined today in this Saturday morning are all motivated individuals. Isn't it? Big claps for all of you. Big claps instead of instead going to the beach, right? You are spending time here to learn PMO. Oh my God! Big round of applause. You no, know, give, give some more energy in the you know the, the, the round of applause. Fantastic! Thank you very much. Yeah. So number four is you know is, is identifying champions. What does these champions mean? Those who are only performers within the organizations? No, champions are those who wants to develop their career in PMO. Number two, they also need to have some kind of understanding about processes, policies, templates, quality compliances. Because in PMO, you cannot just go and teach, you know, uh, you know uh, early stage, you know, the processes and everything that will increase your effort. Instead, you hire a CVPMO professionals or hire a PMP certified professionals who has experience working in process before and who also developed that career in PMO. Identify those champions, okay? Right. Then number five, creating processes, which is with sustainable effort. Number six, constant pace. What does it mean? Constant pace, right? I would rather say, if you have delivered something visible in within three months, make sure every three to six months you are giving a visible output to your top management. Every three to six months, constant pace. You are giving something in six months, the next one year, nothing you are giving, top management will get confused. Make sure in your roadmap, you plan something, you are delivering something very frequently to your top management, right? Number seven, welcoming changes. Welcoming changes, that means, adjust with the organization's objectives. Adjust the organization objectives, right? Number five, number eight, actually assembling with the PMO team. What is the coverage of the PMO team? What do you think? On not only project, you know, the head of PMO or project team, all the different stakeholders, department heads who are connected with the PMO actually very closely, right? We'll, you know, have sessions with them very, very frequently and all, right? Number nine is, you know, do frequent lessons learned. Instead of having three months lessons learned, have monthly lessons learned with your stakeholders in PMO and communicate it, communicate it and learn from your mistakes. Measure progress. In PMO guidebook, you will see a couple of ways to measure your KPIs, to measure your KPIs. 11, continuous improvement, and 12, harnessing change for the competitive advantage. These are the 12 principles you need to follow. I would request Corinne and Nadine to actually share these slides with the, with the attendees who actually has joined today, right? We'll do it next day, right? So practices in Agile, very quickly, if I say, have a tool where you have options to prioritize your projects. Number one. Number two, have your tool must support that you can prioritize your re project requirements and stakeholder requirements, right? Backlog requirements, your tool must support this, right? Then you also need to have options to track your velocity. 
Frequent reviews, real-time visibility. That Christine says, transparency. Visibility and transparency, which is also one of the philosophy of agile project management, right? That's all, right? So now, uh, you know, uh, think what are the, what are the good practices you are going from today's sessions and apply tomorrow in your project management or in your PMO office. Think of it, right? I'm closing now. Now um, I have taken almost like more than a more than one hour. Yeah, thank you for bearing me for last one hour actually. But I really appreciate. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like this agile concept, agile PMO concept? Laura, what do you think? I think there's lots that we can learn um, to use in our organizations for sure. Perfect, Derek, what do you think? No, I agree. I look forward to going back over it again and I mainly listen, I wanna go back over it, I'll be taking the notes. Fantastic, Jeff, what is your takeout from Agile PMO? I would say um, I'm right in the middle of an assessment right now with a new customer. So my first kind of project with my own business here, utilizing some of these methods that I'm still learning, but um, yeah, no, a lot of good stuff here today, takeaways. Um, so I'll definitely be reviewing again, but thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. The show is not, still not over, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> the show will go on, uh, you know, 15, 20 more minutes because you got to win the PMO guidebook today, right? So I now pass it back to Narin. Thank you very much, okay. everyone, for listening to me last one, more than one hour. I really like the audience. Thank you very much. And, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, I'm just going to share my LinkedIn ID and my website. Feel free to drop me any Agile uh, questions that you have. Uh, it's one of our passion uh, to actually work in Agile PMO. And also one thing I just want to give you a declaration today, very interesting thing. Agile PMO, the concept is new, by the way. And, um, you know, PMO Global Institute, actually one of the pioneer developing the concept of Agile PMO. We are one of the pioneers and something is coming big. The certified Agile PMO professional certification is coming very, very soon. Yeah. Very, very soon, <laughs> right? So currently we have a framework which is being tested in different Agile PMO environment. So we're going to have some reference shortly and, we, and, and then we'll be able to share the framework with all of you. And this is going to be very, very exciting, right? Thank you very much. Back to thank, you. thank you, thank you, Abdullah. We are very grateful for this practical uh, session. Uh, I saw lots uh, of participants took notes. That's very good. And uh, for today, we have uh, uh, one more speaker, um, our brilliant vice president of global partnership, uh, Corinne O'Brien. So uh, she's responsible for promoting uh, PMO learning through collaboration and partnership. Uh, Corin is an expert uh, communicator uh, who has benefited from engaging in multiple work experiences across industry verticals, uh, such as uh, education, hospitality, uh, and uh, uh, so much more. She has a deep understanding uh, of the diversity of project management, uh, gaining cross-cultural expertise from operating in six countries uh, uh, and uh, across three continents uh, uh, over the past 16 years. Uh, Corin understands how hard uh, uh, it can be to drive constructive uh, and uh, lasting change uh, in organizations. Uh, by sharing the knowledge of uh, uh, PMO Global Institute, uh, CBPMO uh, framework and guidebook, uh, Corin strives to change uh, uh, the fabric of PMO across continents by ensuring PMOs uh, um, are not simply uh, performing, but succeeding, uh, thriving, and speaking the same global language. So welcome, Corinne O'Brien, uh, on the stage. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my section today is to talk about careers within PMO. Um, as we are sort of running a little bit over time, I think I'll just quickly go through um, how PMO Global Institute can support you in your career. So Abdullah was talking about the champions of PMOs. And these are the people who um, love the job. They love the process. They 
get stuff done. And if this is you within the PMO space, we can help you and support you in three different ways. So let me just share my screen with you. Here we go. So there are different roles within a PMO. Let's quickly look at some of the roles that they may include. So you can have PMO staff. You can be a PMO trainer, coach, PMO officers, PMO managers, PMO director, PMO sponsor, and of course, a PMO consultant. So we are here to support you with our um, guidebook, with our framework, um, with our team. You know, the PMO Global Institute team are a really ambitious team, and we are going to change the face of PMOs globally in the next three years. So I can see a few of our team here today. So thank you for coming team. Um, today, please, Nadine, if you can share the uh, membership link, please, in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. So everybody today, please sign up to be um, an associate member at PMO Global Institute. With this membership, you can see the framework for free. You'll also be getting uh, discounts on our future events. There's many benefits to being a member. So please sign up now. Um, five of you are going to win a regular membership today. So as Nadine said, you've all been taking notes. It's gonna be a tough competition today, I think. But with this membership, you can download the PMO guidebook the digital version. So it's absolutely a prize worth winning today. So that is the membership. The next way we can support you is to train you as a CB PMO consultant. So we do have a few of our authorized instructors here with us today. And these guys provide a 21 hour course for you. By the end of this course, you will be able to set up, implement, um, and run PMOs in different industry verticals, different sized organizations. So this really qualifies you as a consultant. So this is the second way that we can support you at PMO Global Institute. So the third way is to become a business partner. So this qualifies you to be an authorized instructor for the CBPMO certification. So if you love training, if you'd like to spread this knowledge and create an amazing business for yourself, please contact me. I will pop my email in the chat box here and you can become a business partner of PMO Global Institute. So that's just the three ways that we can help you. Please sign up for the membership now and um yeah thank you very much for joining us thank you thank you, thank you, so thank much. you, so much. Thank you corinne uh, for letting uh, us uh, to know uh, about these big opportunities uh, in uh, um career in pmo career and uh, for today the main part um, uh, is coming to the end uh, uh, and uh, we are getting closer to some activities uh, but first of all we have a QA session so if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask is there anybody who wants to ask a question please uh, type in the chat box or you can uh, simply just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question Any questions? So, all right. They want to play the game, Nadine. This yeah, is all right, is. so let's mm. play, let's play the game. <laughs> <laughs> so they are ready, they took all notes and now we are ready. Yeah. So other way could be, you know, you can give me the credit that I have explained well actually, so there is no confusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're so modest, boss. So I'm looking forward to play <laughs> game and win the regular membership. Yes. <laughs> so, yes all right. I will stop uh, our recording now. Okay.